Hello and welcome to this quick presentation on correcting unbalance or balancing. My name is Jason Tranter, the Founder and Managing Director of Mobius Institute. Mobius Institute provides vibration training and accredited certification. So the basic balancing process is that we will take vibration readings on the machine when it is out of balance and measure the vibration amplitude and phase. That will give us an idea of where the heavy spot is on the rotor. The heavy spot is the concentration of the unbalanced forces you might say. Then the idea is that we will add a weight to the rotor to counteract those unbalanced forces. But to find out exactly where the heavy spot is and to figure out how much weight to add, we will add a trial weight to the rotor first. So we'll stop the machine, add the trial weight, measure it again and see how that trial weight has influenced the vibration and phase. So let's say for example this was our rotor and this is the summation of all those unbalanced forces whether it's because dirt has built up or there's erosion or corrosion or whatever the reason is. Now those that concentration of weight is in a particular place we can vectorially represent that and that's what that little blue line is there and I'm just going to stop it from wobbling back and forward. And you can imagine okay if we run this machine in this unbalanced state we're creating all these these forces that we want to eliminate. So what we're going to do is to get an idea of where that balance weight is or where the uh, concentration of unbalanced forces are. We're going to add a weight to the rotor which is like a calibration rate weight. So I am going to place it there because if I've taken my measurements correctly I will have an idea where this is located from my magnitude and phase readings and I will want to place this trial weight opposite and I will try to estimate what that trial weight would be to minimize the vibration but in our case I'm just going to pop on this one gram and what it's actually done is it's changed this unbalanced vector a little bit but what we actually do is we run the machine and we measure the vibration and we see great the amplitude has reduced but we also measure the phase and knowing the fa new phase angle we can compute with vectors and I'll show you that in just a moment we can compute that okay what we should have done is placed a weight obviously directly opposite where this one is now at this point we can either take the trial weight off and add the final weight on or leave it on and add a weight that'll do the job so I'm gonna put that there because I can figure out what it needs to be just by looking at it and you can see there's this little vector here so now when I run the machine better take off the brakes okay you can see that the vibration levels are much lower now we've come close to balancing this machine you can still see a bit of wobble there and I'll come back to this point in a moment of when is it satisfactorily balanced but that's the basic process we're going to go through remember always safety first you know when you add those weights they must be attached securely there must be no way for them to fly off but just in case you need to make sure you're always standing in a place where should the weights come off uh, you can't be injured but also go through the lockout tag out process and make sure there's no chance of backflow through the fan for example so that it starts turning while you're doing the work okay so we can use vector or polar paper to draw out these vectors that I sort of mentioned a moment ago or you should find that your um, your vibration analyzer has a balancing program to do this this type of work now this is the vector method what I'm just going to quickly show you is this uh, polar plot here shows the uh, the amplitude is radially measured outward so we calibrate our paper to be in line with the vibration units and amplitudes that we're seeing and angular is the uh, phase angle that we measured so in this particular case let's pretend that the reading was this amplitude with that angle then we put a trial weight on and it has some influence and as a result the vibration was reduced to this small vector here with a different phase angle and that's the aim to put on the trial weight to see that effect and we can do some vector subtraction and whatnot which it's really this presentation we can't go into too much detail bottom line is we figure out where the final weight should go the other little thing we can do is say okay well 
even though it comes up with a particular solution, you know, this much mass at this angle, if we have fan blades, for example, let's say we have 10 blades, um, what we may need to do is split the weight between uh, two blades. So we're going to put some mass on this blade, some mass on that blade in order to come up with the desired effect which is a mass at that angle there. Anyway, that's if we've just got fixed positions where we can place the weights. Okay, now I mentioned this just a moment ago but when is the, balan the rotor balanced? In my little example a moment ago the vibration was reduced to a, a certain level and we might say well hey that amplitude's much better than what we had so the job's done but the job isn't done until it's precision balanced. Now there's an ISO standard where you can either calculate or use a chart to say what's the speed of the rotor um, and what amount of residual or remaining unbalance is permissible or allowable. So basically when we do our uh, trim run it comes up with a final solution that tells you where to put the weight on the rotor. We then take another reading to see what our final vibration and phase is like. Rather than just using that value we can use that information to say well the amount of weight that we should place on the rotor now uh, based on this table, based on the amount of weight per kilogram of rotor weight, is that acceptable or not? And these, this chart shows that for different balance tolerances how much remaining unbalanced mass is permissible. So we need to go for a high level of precision which would be G 1.0 or even lower. For high speed machines we need even better balance tolerance. The equivalent API standard is approximately G.7. In any case, it's important to go through this process and if anyone is doing balancing for you, make sure that they truly understand these standards and make sure you can precision balance the machine. So in conclusion, if you can stop and start a machine and gain safe access to the rotor where weights can be added, then you can perform this in situ or in place balancing rather than performing shop balancing. You add a trial weight to determine how the weight at a given location influences the vibration and then we perform trim runs, additional runs until we've achieved precision balance. And We really should aim for precision balance to maximize the life of bearings and seals and the structure itself. We should aim for G1.0 or better. Well, I hope this very quick presentation has helped you understand the balancing process. Um, please contact us if you have any additional questions.